zero, shunya, the concept of shunya. And equally important is the concept of infinity. I think both of these are the findings of those great rishis. It is more important really how we can use Sanskrit, the language for conveying the messages of modern technology and science. So when I look at this uh, journey of language in Sanskrit and the rocket science, the aeronautics that connects them, I'm really fascinated many a times by the work of great scholars and that they have created such great books. The very first book which I have come across in Sanskrit which talks about the domain which I am familiar with is the Surya Siddhanta. Many of you would have known about this book. And this is the book specifically talks about the solar system, the sun, the planets and how the planets move around the sun the periodicity of this movement, the time scales which are involved, the size of this, the whole structure, even the size of the earth. I think all these thoughts that happened there, that time, it didn't stay here. It traveled all the way through the Arabic, no, no travelers, it went to Europe, and thousands of year, years later, the knowledge came back to us in the form of discovery by the great scientists of the Western world. Though it was all found out here, it was written down in this language. You know that the, many of the literature written in terms of the ideas like zero. If you subtract one from the one, you get zero, shunya, the concept of shunya. And equally important is the concept of infinity. I think both of these are the findings of those great rishis, expressed in very beautiful poetic ways. Even you know the algebra. The concept of the mathematical concepts called algebra, the square root of numbers, very precisely expressed. Even Vothayana equated to Pythagoras theorem. You know, Vothayana was living in during 800 BC. Pythagoras came much later. Many other concepts like the concept of Vimana, architecture, the construction technologies, the concept of time which is beautifully expressed in many, many literature. The structure of the universe and how it evolves and grows bigger and bigger with the time. Metallurgy and manufacturing, chemical technologies, medicines, treatment languages, the structure of the grammar. But the difficulty that is faced by the scientists at that time was this language was expressed more in Shruti and not in written form. And because of this Shruti nature of learning and teaching, the Sanskrit attained a beautiful nature that it is very easy to listen and by heart it, unlike many other languages. It's a rule-based, formula-based and logical syntax. For people like us who are engineers, scientists, like it very much. Any language which is rule-based, syntax-based is something that suits to into computer languages. And you know, computer people who are especially working in the artificial intelligence, machine learning, they like Sanskrit. And there is a lot of research being done how Sanskrit can be used for bringing into computation, natural language processing. It is not the old literature and science that we must propagate. It is more important really how we can use Sanskrit the language for conveying the messages of modern technology and science. Then only it will survive. I think all these thoughts that happened there, that time, it didn't stay here. It traveled all the way through the Arabic now, travelers, it went to Europe, and thousands of years later, the knowledge came back to us in the form of discovery by the great scientists of the Western world. Though it was all found out here, it was written down in this language.